Helen Drew with that report. With me in the studio is Mark Reckless, MP for Rochester and Strood. Mark, this situation Terry and Jean find themselves in is inescapably, it's awful. What can you do about it? Mm, I agree, I and mean, I think that was a, a very moving piece that you had. And when people talk about choosing between fuel and, and food, it is enormously difficult. Many older people in that situation, I think, will particularly attract sympathy. Um, one area I would like to do something, frankly, is what we're doing in terms of renewables. Every single energy co company has to put an extra amount on the bill, and it can easily be £100 a, a, a year for a household, which goes to subsidising renewable, renewables and to building wind turbines and building the infrastructure, even though all that has to be backed up with sort of you know, gas, gas supply as well. Why don't we start off with the basics, mm. the winter fuel allowance? For the last three years, the winter fuel allowance has been higher than this government have set it. You have reduced it by £50 for the over 60s and by £100 for the over 80s. In, your, in Medway alone, there are 13,000 households that are in fuel poverty. Nationally, the latest figures suggest it's going to be a quarter of the population, a quarter of households. Why did you drop the winter fuel allowance this year? I mean, I don't think it's fair either there or in your introduction to say that the coalition government has come winter fuel allowance in that way. What happened is last year, the outgoing Labour government brought in for, for one year and one year only That's on their own budget. That's not true. They have had a higher winter fuel allowance for the last three years. You're about to tell me it's an election pledge. It might have garnered headlines, but it wasn't just last year. It's three years it's been at that higher rate. And, and you, your government could have chosen to stick with that higher rate and they chose to, to, to put it back down again. And as I understand it, that the 50 and, and the 100 pounds was something that even in Labour's spending plans, they were going to take away this year. So if the coalition government were to do anything, it would be finding extra money or cuts from elsewhere in order to put money into the budget that the previous government well, didn't Well, here's the money that could have gone into the budget. The Exchequer had a £200 million windfall, effectively, as a result of the extra VAT on higher gas and electricity bills. Nine reputable organisations campaigned for the chance to channel that back to vulnerable people in the winter statement. He didn't do that. Instead, he gave £250 million in energy relief to big business. That's the wrong priority at a time like this, isn't it? Yeah. What, what I think we need to do in order to help people who are struggling to pay the fuel bills is we need to reorientate our help. So instead of making the energy companies give very large amounts of money in order to subsidise yet more building of wind turbines and other renewables that produce very little electricity, what I would like to do is see much of that money reorientated so it goes into the schemes to help fuel efficiency to help some of the examples you gave, help people insulate their, their homes. One, because that has a much bigger impact in terms of sort of reducing bills and allowing people to, to, to heat their homes and not have as bad problems as some of these people you saw in your clip just now. But, but, but will also reduce carbon emissions by much, much more than many of these renewable projects do. But you had £200 million that you could have put back into the warm front. I mean, the last round of warm front spending, which, as you, you say, indicate provides people with insulation, it also provides people with energy efficient boilers. The last round was a billion pounds. This latest round is only worth 210 billion pounds. You could have boosted it by 200 million just with the, the, the VAT on the, the gas electricity prices we're all I'm paying. sorry, we don't have 200 million pounds. That 200 million pounds means we're borrowing 122 billion rather than 122.2 billion. We are borrowing 9% of everything we earn every year and it can't continue and if we were to borrow more as Labour suggests then I'm afraid the markets would not lend the money they do to the British government at 2% and we'd be paying something like Italy at 7% a year. Well here's another idea, you wouldn't have to borrow at all, means test the winter fuel allowance, lots of people have suggested it over the years, why do you give the winter fuel allowance to somebody like Helen Mirren? You know, a well-paid actress, she doesn't need it, and she doesn't want it either. Mm. If you means-tested the winter fuel allowance, you could give more money to people like Terry and Jean, and you wouldn't have to pay it to thousands and thousands of really quite wealthy pensioners in this country. Mm -hmm. Well, I would encourage uh, Helen Mirren or others who feel like that to put that money back into the pot or to support charities who are helping people But the government's not prepared to, to do it themselves, to means -tested. You've means-tested other benefits. Child, child benefit, for instance, is going to be means-tested in the future. I mean, the argument against means-testing is the more means-testing is done, the less incentive there is for people to save. And I, I had in my constituent, constituency surgery, I have people coming in. But you think these pensioners have got money to save? No, well, if you means test every bench benefit for, for pensioners, what happens is people have no incentive to save and put away money during their working life. 
What I would like to do is help bring down fuel bills, help pensioners, particularly those in the severe fuel poverty, to insulate their houses properly. And in terms of supporting that, but also taking action on climate change to the extent there's an issue with CO2 emissions, I believe it would be much better to use money rather than subsidising very, very large amounts of wind turbines and other renewable energy. I think that money could be much better used by putting it into home insulation, by helping people with energy efficiency measures so that pensioners such as some of those on your clip are able to afford to heat their homes. Okay. That's what I'd like to do. Mark Reffers, thank you for making the time to be with us this week. Thank you.